Time now for Traffic on the Turf. Helping you navigate your way through weeds, pests, and disease. And loading your trucks with the products and tools you'll need to provide your clients with the healthiest lawns, trees, and shrubs. Now, here's Eric Jones, the turf teacher for today's Traffic on the Turf. What is the number one rule, or let me take it back a minute. What is the number one reason we have a pesticide of failure? Not calibrating your equipment. That is a very good reason. But even before calibration, we go out and we do a site visit. We're talking to Mr. and Ms. Smith. We're coming up with a program for them, and we're going to take care of their situation. Why would we have a pesticide failure? We make an application and nothing is done. They still have. We, we didn't read the label. That is another big reason. <laughs> but prior, prior to that. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm stabbing. Just, no, those uh, are great answers. Great answers. But it's one thing. We, Go ahead, yeah. John. Uh, because we haven't measured the site correctly and, and applied the right amount. Good answer. All three of those are, I mean, right there on the money. But prior to doing all of that, number one reason we have a pesticide failure. We hadn't done our research. We haven't done our research on what? Uh, the correct uh, chemical for the solution for the problem. Great answer. But prior to that, what oh, didn't Lord. we research? Or what didn't we do correctly? Take soil sample. Good answer. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting all around it. We, did, we, we, we misidentified the pest. We didn't correctly uh, identify the situation, the bug. It was an insect that we thought it was. We, we necessarily didn't see the insect. We were basing it on damage that we seen, and we didn't do our research or thoroughly investigate it because a lot of these pests, they can have the same damage. It's almost kind of like telling our customers, hey, make sure you water them plants correctly that we just planted for you. And a plant's going to get wilted only on two situations. And what is that? Uh, too, much, too much water or too little water. Too much yeah. or too little, right? But that homeowner don't know that. They see a plant start wilting, and it's sitting there, and you, we go and look at it, and we try to pull it out of the ground. It's like you know, stuck in the mud and they keep pouring the water to it because they think it, you know, Hey, it's wilted. We got to add more water to it. Um, we just, we got to, we got to go in there and make sure that we've correctly identified that pest, whether it's, uh, uh, especially when it comes to insects or a disease. And so once we figure out what it is that we are trying to, uh, control, then we can read that label, pick out the correct pesticide, calibrate our equipment, and then get, get, to, get down to business. Because the last thing we want to do is have Mr. and Ms. Smith call us back, and we look like we don't know what we're talking about. And we're like, well, I thought it was this, but it ended up being this. We want to do it right the first time. Now, what do you think about when it comes to applying that correct amount of pesticide? We send out one of our technicians. And they've uh, maybe or maybe not calibrated their equipment, but we still get a callback. Do you think it's more detrimental to our checkbook if we've applied too little or too much of a product? Or could it be both? Could be both. More could likely both. too much. Why is that, Paul? Uh, well, if you overdo it, then if you put too much product out, then, you know, you've um, created more damage, you know, you, you um, could damage the turf. we got to go back yeah, and repair yeah. it. Yeah. You spray too much 2,4-D product. You burn up the centipede, for example. Whereas if you don't spray enough, if you spray a light rate, um, you just didn't spray enough to do the job to kill mm -hmm. the weeds. And then what we got to do, go reapply, back. go back. And then right. technically on that second trip, 
we've applied more product probably we need that technician is going to be upset they're going to be like throwing a little more in there like, man i'm having to come back on my own time or whatever they're yeah. going to burn it up they're going to burn yeah. it up so it is to the t one of the most important things we do is to apply the correct amount of pesticide we've got to let our guys and gals calibrate in the mornings before they go out They've got to come in in the afternoons. They've got to clean that equipment and have it ready to be calibrated in the morning. Because if you read our core manual written by NC State and, you know, Department of Ag, they are saying that we're supposed to calibrate our equipment more than once a day. Can any of you guys give me an example of when we might want to calibrate more than once a day on our equipment? Oh, if the wind picks up. Yeah, well, if wind's picking it, we probably might need to not spray it all. Sp not spray it all. Call it call it an afternoon and head home and and get ready for the next day. Yeah, multiple multiple people spraying on the same equipment. Yeah, multiple people. Yeah. If 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 John's taking it out in the morning and Phillips taking it out in the afternoon, definitely we'd recalibrate. But what about the same individual? When would if John might want to do it more than once a day? If he switch products. Switching products. Perfect. Great example. Great example. Any other times? Probably after about 12 o'clock, depending on their walking speed, if they start slowing down. Amen. Amen. Yeah. They've had that heavy lunch. You know, they had, they had that 12 inch hoagie instead of a six inch hoagie. It's getting hotter. They're getting tired. Maybe it's on a Monday and they're dragging feed anyway. So they are getting slower. So yes, right after lunch, another, Another great answer. Now, start thinking about some of our properties in the different style property. You guys on the East Coast probably don't have to worry about that near the beach. Everything's pretty much the same. But what about here in mid-North Carolina or even in Western North Carolina? When might we want to calibrate again based on our properties? Different terrain. Different terrain, yes. Yep. We might have. We might be in a neighborhood that's all flat in the morning. Well, in that afternoon, we might go to where there's some rolling hills in that neighborhood or steeper yards. You would definitely want to calibrate because one, pushing that heavy fertilized spreader up a hill, you're, you're dropping your ground speed versus if it was flat. So good, good mm. stuff there, guys. You, you guys know what you're doing. So that's good stuff there. Now that today's traffic has been cleared up, you're free to stay ahead of your competition. Oh. 